What's going on YouTube? This is Dre the Plug coming at you guys with some more technical heat. And in this video, actually these next few videos, I really just want to touch on, harp on a whole lot of my friends who are also into tech and are in all types of different technical jobs all across the country. So I'm really going to go in and have one-on-ones with different people, different states, and just have one-on-ones with them about their technical job. What positions do they have? What do they do on a day-to-day -day basis? Ask just certain questions. And on top of that, majority of all of my engineering friends, they have some type of side hustle. So I'll really just give them the opportunity to also go in and promote whatever type of business that they have on the side. Let's get into it. Let's get into some of this technical heat. So in this video, this person is named Carlos Brown, as you guys can tell by the last name, this is actually my cousin. So we're gonna jump into some technical heat with the cuz. He worked for NASA, yes, NASA. And we're gonna just go into details and we're gonna just hear his side of the story when it comes down to his technical job. All right, so what's your name, major, what school you went to, job location and job description? Just give us all of that good information. Tell the people who you are. My name is Carlos Brown. I'm from Moss Point, Mississippi. I work at NASA Jaren C. Stennis Space Center. Um, I graduated from Tulane University and I am an information system security analyst and an ISSO. Why did you choose this job field? Like what made you want to get into this specifically? Working for NASA, that's pretty that's pretty dope. Um, so back when I was in high school, I got into a computer class and that pretty much got me into, you know, information technology. I did two years in a Cisco class and I got this certification or the certificate of completion. Mm -hmm. And I just kept traveling that road. I went and got my associates, then I got my bachelor's. And then I just you not know, really fell in love with computers. So that's what got me into it. Gotcha. So are you doing all of the stuff that you imagine you was doing before actually taking this job? Um, I'm not. I mean, I've never planned on working in information security and just the complexity of it. And to me, sometimes it's like it's kind of like the things that you see on TV where you thread hunting and you're tracking down the bad guys and the guys from overseas and you're blocking IPs. And it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a different experience. All right, so what do you feel like is the most beneficial thing when it comes down to your major, like from start to finish, you know, working for NASA, being in IT, going all the way back to even going to your first class, your first school session, first semester, all the way up into actually being in the company and, you know, doing what you do best. What do you feel like was the most beneficial thing from start to finish? Um, I think the most beneficial thing for me has been the flexibility. I mean, when I look at other employers and other jobs, like when you're in IT, you basically have the flexibility to be able to work from anywhere if you can get a remote job. So um, the way my schedule is set up, sometimes I work from um, home, Sometimes I actually go into work, but I think the flexibility has been, you know, a big part. And then the way IT, the way the field is growing, it's always room for like people to come in. So it's always a lot of money in the field. I like that too. Um, it's never a shortage of positions. So, yeah. All right. So what would you say is something that you did not expect jumping into this major? Is something that really just stood out to you where it's like, Man, me working inside of this field, I was not expecting that to happen or this to happen. What would you say? I think um, what I what I would say is the complexity of the organization. And what I mean by that is, so I've worked in uh, other IT jobs. So I've been, I've never did help this per se, but I've been, I've did um, IT specialist or IT or PC technician. I've did smaller jobs like that. And what I've come to find out is when you're working for a smaller company, it's less IT people. So you're like, you basically have to be the jack of all trades and you basically learning and working hands on. And I would suggest for anybody that's getting into the field to try to get into a startup job or try to get into um, a job with fewer IT people. That way you'll be able to get all the experience that you want. I've learned things that probably would have took me two or three years to learn within a year just by throwing uh, my, my balls, throwing me to the wolves, just be like learn it and let's do it. Gotcha. And I like that. Being at um, NASA, it's so complex. It's basically a, like any job, it's a job for anything that they need. So it's not just like five or six IT people, it's a lot of IT people. So that's one of the most 
uh, crazy things I didn't expect. I thought it would be just, you know, me and when my department is me and a few other people, but I thought, but I thought that was the IT people, like just three, four people. But then come to find out, it's like a lot of people compared to being in a smaller company. So, but yeah, I would suggest anybody that's trying to get into the field to get into a smaller company, you'll be more hands-on, you'll learn so quick, and then you'll be able to jump to a bigger company. All right, so touch on your side hustle. You know, pretty much everybody that I know that's into tech right now, all of us pretty much just gotta just so happen to have another side hustle, another little business on the side, or something we just working on on top of it. Let them know your side hustle. I know you have your Instagram, you have your YouTube that you have going on with the whole business, stocks, cryptocurrency, and all that stuff. Let the people know what that's all about. So my side hustle right now is basically just um, building wealth through stocks, Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrency in general, and um, real estate. So. I currently own a house, but I'm also into other type of investments that don't require you to actually um, own the property. So if you know about e-reads or REITs, I'm also into that. Um, my Instagram is Los Brown, L-O-S-B-R-O-W-N. My um, other Instagram is CB Life Hacks, and my YouTube is CB Life Hacks, one word. But um, basically, I'm just, you know, building wealth, um, teaching people how to, you know, maintain their money, also multiply their money. You know, I do a lot of uh, budgeting um, and just stuff like that. Gotcha. So something else I'll touch on with this whole crisis with the whole, you know, this whole virus that's going on. A lot of people are saying like, it'll be nice as soon as all of this is over with to jump into the stocks now. Like, what's your take on that? I would say, so I'm all about, if you, if you talk to a person that's you know, a rich person or one of the YouTube social celebrity people, um, like Grant Cardone, not to be named bashing, but you know, people always say you shouldn't be liquid, you should always have have your money working for you. Mm. I believe that's fifty fifty. So the way I look at it is you should always, you know, have your money working for you, have it into some kind of investment. But also you should be liquid. And what I mean by that, you wanna have enough money where when a crisis like this comes you can make a lot of money from it. Like what a lot of people fail to realize is from this time this year until next summer, there's gonna be a lot of millionaires made just off of this crisis. We've seen the stock market go down about 30 or 40% of its earnings if you uh, track the Dow and the S&P 500. I personally, just in the last three weeks, I've put about $30,000 into the market in terms of stocks, crypto, um, e-reads. And even though the market is going up and down, like I've got I've gotten such a good deal on the stocks that I've invested in and uh, uh, the cryptocurrencies that by the time this time next year, I'll probably make about twenty or twenty two thousand off my money just from the investments. But like I tell people, um when it comes to trading stocks it's not, uh, for me, it's not a short-term game. Mm -hmm. I'm all about the long-term game. So I consider myself an investor. So I look at companies, I look at I look at the net worth, I look at the dividends, I look at how the track record of how the stock has been doing. Um, well, right now I'm looking at it based on last year to this year, or last year to this time, um, February, because that's pretty much where all stocks started to change. But uh, I gauge that concept Basically, I look at their chart, and that's how I figure out, you know, if this is a good company to buy, who's running the company, whether it's selling, it's, do I think it's going to be value, valuable within the next decade? I, I would never buy a company or purchase stock from a company that I don't think is going to be valuable for at least 10 to 20 years because I'm a long-term investor, and I'm looking to invest and hold my um, shares for at least 20 to 30 years until I retire, so... All right, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, something else that I was gonna touch on was, um, so you mentioned the whole, if you're gonna get into this, try to look long-term versus short-term. I hear a lot of people that say, if you're one of those people where you basically get like sucked into like Robin Hood or something like that, don't try to just put some money in and automatically just expect, you know, within a few weeks or so, you're gonna have money back. Like, what would you say for people that think that route is still possible? Like you could easily just get money just by just joining? Um. You can, you can get money just by joining. Um, it's little tips and tricks. 
so I know right now Robin Hood and Acorns they're doing um, a promotion where if you if you currently have the app and you know three people that don't have the app you can um, get those three people signed up and they'll give you $150 so that's a little hack within itself and you can get every three people to sign up this hundred fifty dollars the let the and it's only it's only a month long but the amount of money you can make could be limitless just like i i currently i'm using weevil right now because um i'm uh just tracking weevil and learning more about that app but i've also made probably about 250 dollars just off the last three weeks just from referrals Mm -hmm. so a lot of people can make money off of like apps like robin hood weevil and acorns but I think if you're a serious investor, you should look into um, to bigger, diverse apps like TD Ameritrade, SkyTrade, E-Trade. Um, if you have a brokerage account with a, a known bank, maybe like a Wells Fargo or a Vanguard, I would tell everybody to look into Vanguard, BTSAX. Um, but yeah, those are the ones that are my favorite, um, Vanguard, TD Ameritrade, and my other personal account. So. And that concludes this video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. It really do help my channel when it comes down to the YouTube algorithm. If you guys have any questions regarding anything, just hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on the gram, at Dre the Plug, one, two, three. And then also, go check out my other YouTube channel. This is actually my second channel. My first one was called Andre Classic Cuts. I basically go in and give tutorials about all types of different haircuts. I actually show people how to do different type of things with the clippers that has never been done. And I pretty much go into detail as to why certain things happen. So definitely go check out that channel. Besides that, be on the lookout for my next content that's dropping. Be on the lookout for it because it's coming real soon. And I'm out.